Hello friends, the chapter that we are going to discuss today is employment, growth, informalization and other issues. We will be discussing part 1 of this chapter. After going through this lesson, the learners will be able to understand these things. 1. Meaning of economic and non-economic activities. 2. Supply of labor, labor force, labor force participation rate. 3. Participation of people in employment. 4. Self-employed and hired workers in India. 5. Employment in different sectors. 6. Casualization of workforce. We will start with introduction of this. People do a variety of work. Some work on farms, in factories, in banks, in shops and many other workplaces. Yet, a few others work at home. Work at home includes not only traditional work like weaving, lace making or variety of handicrafts, but also modern jobs like programming work in the IT industry. Work plays an important role in our lives as individuals and members of society. People work for earning a living. Some people get or have money by inheriting it, not working for it. This does not completely satisfy anybody. Being employed in work gives us a sense of self-worth and enables us to relate ourselves meaningfully with others. Every working person is actively contributing to national income and hence the development of the country by engaging in various economic activities. We do not work only for ourselves. We also have a sense of accomplishment when we work to meet the requirements of those who are dependent on us. Having recognized the importance of work, Mahatma Gandhi insisted upon education and training through a variety of work like craft. Studying about working people gives us insights into the quality and nature of employment in our country and helps in understanding the planning of our human resources. It helps us to analyze the contribution made by different industries and sectors towards national income. It also helps us to address many social issues such as exploitation of marginalized sections of the society and child labor, etc. Workforce and employment. The activities which contribute to gross domestic product that is GDP are called economic activities. The population which is engaged in economic activities are workers. Even if they temporarily abstain from work due to illness or injury, they are called workers. It is generally believed that all those who are paid by an employer for their work are workers. However, those who are self-employed are also workers. Let us understand the concept of supply of labor. Supply of labor is measured in terms of man days of work. One day is, you know, equal to eight hours. It has reference to wage rate. Supply of labor may increase or decrease even when the number of workers remains constant as it is measured in terms of working hours or working man days. It is considered to be important not only because it is productive, but also because it activates other factors and makes them useful for production purposes. Therefore, the size of labor force in a country is of crucial importance for the level of economic activity. Labor is primarily a function of production. Size of labor force in a country is determined by the number of people in the age group 15 to 59 years as children below 15 years and people above 59 years do not participate in production activity. It should also be understood that all persons in the age group of 15 to 59 years do not undertake productive labor. Such people who voluntarily keep themselves out of production activity are not included in the labor force. Thus, the size of labor force depends on all economically active population including unemployed. In India, 40.1% population constituted the labor force. The increase in labor force creates pressure for generation of employment opportunities. In India, the ratio of workers to total population is low in comparison with developed economies. The workers 
population in rural areas is greater than in urban areas as in rural areas all the members of family participate in work there are several reasons for this people in rural areas have limited resources to earn a higher income and therefore they have to participate more in employment market many do not go to school colleges and other training institutions even if some go they discontinue their education in the middle to join the workforce whereas in urban areas a significant part of population go to schools and other educational institutions for study urban people have a variety of employment opportunities they look for the appropriate jobs to suit the qualifications and skills in rural areas people cannot stay at home as their economic conditions may not allow them to do so the female worker participation rate is much lower as compared to the male workers participation rate there is also significant interstate variation in workers participation rate across states now we will we will be studying basic terms labor force participation rate labor force participation rate also known as lfpr is defined as the number of persons in the labor force per 1000 persons it includes people who are employed as well as those who are unemployed but are actively looking for jobs workers participation ratio workers participation ratio also known as wpr is defined as the number of persons employed per 1000 persons now proportion of unemployed proportion of unemployed also known as pu is defined as the number of persons employed per 1000 persons next the important topic is unemployment rate unemployment rate or ur is defined as the number of persons employed per 1000 persons in the labor force which includes employed as well as unemployed people in a country where majority of workers are employed in the unorganized sector and pursuing multiple activities estimating labor force and its derivatives by a single approach is a difficult task in such cases no single measure is appropriate to estimate the labor force parameters precisely as per international practice labor force related parameters can be estimated for both that is longer reference period as well as the shorter reference period now i'll be discussing types of workers first is self employed workers who own and operate an enterprise to earn their livelihood are known as self employed about 52% workforce in india belongs to this category that is a large number 52% a person owning a cement shop for example is self employed next we come to contract workers as per the definition of contract workers a worker is deemed to be employed as a contract worker when he or she is hired in connection with the work of an establishment by or through a contractor contract workmen are indirect employees persons who are hired supervised and remunerated by a contractor who in turn is compensated by the establishment in addition to the above mentioned categories of workers the term contract workers includes workers whose work are governed by a contract agreement either in writing or orally by the establishment more precisely the workers hired by the establishment directly for a specific job and for a specific period will also be categorized under the contract category of workers now we come to casual wage labor a person casually engaged in other farm or non farm enterprises which includes household as well as non household sector and getting in return wages according to the terms of the daily or periodic work contract is a casual wages labor an example of a casual worker is a construction worker construction workers account for 30% of india's workforce now we come to the elite class that is regular salaried or wage employee other than contract workers 
when a worker is engaged by someone or an enterprise and paid his or her wages on a regular basis they are known as regular salaried employees an example of regular salaried worker is a civil engineer working in the construction company now we discuss employment in different sectors economists generally divide an economy into three broad sectors they are primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector primary sector includes agriculture and allied activities in other words we can say that primary sector includes all the activities where exploitation of nature is required secondary sector consists of manufacturing and construction activities and in tertiary sector various types of services for example transport communication banking insurance and trade etc are included over the last four decades there has been considerable shift of workforce from self employed and regular salaried employment to casual wage work scholars termed this process of movement from self employment and salaried class to casual wage work as casualization of workforce the following table shows the distribution of workers by category of employment during the period 1972 to 2015 table 1 shows the distribution of workers by type of employment between the period 1972 to 2015 although self employment continues to be the major employment provider its share has declined from 61.4% in 1972 to 46.5% only in 2014-15 regular salaried employees as far as regular salaried employees are concerned the share of regular salaried class in total employment has stagnated at around 15% only there is a marginal increase from 15.4% in 1972 to 20.7% in 2014 the share of casual workers in employment has increased this is the major thing major change it has increased from 23.2% in 1972 to 32.8% in 2014 that is why this is known as casualization of workforce what could be the reasons for casualization of workforce the factors which are largely responsible for such increasing casualization of workforce are shifting of status of small and marginal farmers who were self employed earlier into casual workforce because of subdivision of land holdings and decreasing scope of earning from agricultural activities another reason could be displacement of workers who were regular earlier from large industries in urban areas to the status of casual workers still another cause could be slow growth of employment in the organized sector and finally growing demand for casual labor in expanding construction trade and services activities both in urban and rural areas leading towards casualization of workforce having discussed all these things let us now summarize what we have discussed so far all those persons who are engaged in various economic activities and hence contribute to national product are workers about 2/5 of the total population in the country is engaged in various economic activities men particularly rural men form the major section of workforce in india majority of workers in india are self employed casual wage laborers and regular salaried employees together account for less than half the proportion of india's workforce about 3/5 of india's workforce depends on agriculture and other allied activities as the major source of livelihood in recent years the growth of employment has decelerated this tendency of slow rate of employment growth despite high rate of gdp growth is termed as jobless growth